Hi, Ansi Garcia with Verizon. and today we're going to be taking a look at can you adhere to current 911 regulations in the U.S. carries Raybons with just simply Microsoft Teams, direct routing SBC, and Verizon VoIP, Verizon SIP trunking. Well, the answer is yes and no and maybe. And it all depends on a little feature called ELIN Gateway. So let's figure out what that is. Okay, let me go through a visual demo first before we look at all the components needed and a real demo with traces. So let's talk through this. First, on the side over here, we have our customer. Here he is, that's this gray box here. He's got a building here at 1333 West Cherry Stone, and he's decided to do break that up into two ERLs. Each of those ERLs are gonna have eLens, and then we're gonna be dealing with Lynn's phone, and her number is 6691, and she's gonna be registering from eLen number one, that's identified by subnet in the Microsoft list services, Okay, so what does the customer do first? The customer orders VoIP service from us, right? When they order VoIP service, no matter how many phones here he has, he's going to order two extra DIDs for ELINs, right? Now, this is a demo. You would probably have more ELINs than this. In the case of this, I just want to show you how everything works. Okay, so we have two DIDs, two extra DIDs, and we're going to put an address um, when we submit the VoIP order. Right? We can also change this designator via Mac. But we have two entries here, two extra DIDs, and we're also filling out the designator in our VoIP service. Now, the customer is going to go configure Microsoft List Services. Now, you may be saying, well, hold on a minute. That sounds strange. We just gave the designator in the, the addresses right over here to Verizon. We ordered a, a VoIP service. Yes, I know, but you still have to do it over here. Is this address actually going to make it over to Verizon? No, it's not. But this is important. The subnet that's attached to that emergency address and the ELIN that we're going to configure in our list services is important as well. So you can see that this customer or the partner configured two emergency addresses they're identified by subnet or they're going to do dynamic routing dynamic emergency routing by subnet and then there's elins that are configured in the microsoft list service as well okay what's next the phone or client here is going to come up that's going to ask the list service where am i it's registering from 172.16.1.0 so obviously it's going to get some information related to this emergency address right here so it's going to get the, the phone is actually going to get this information right here. All right, what's next? We're going to dial 911. This 911 call is going to come into Microsoft Teams. This is all REST stuff over here. Microsoft Teams is going to translate that to SIP and send it to the DR SBC. In our case, it's Audio Codex SBC. You can see here that the ELIN information is actually sent in PitaFlow. All right, so we have the SIP invite, the from header 6691, that is right. That's the caller ID. And then we have PitaFlow information with an ELIN buried into it, the 6284. All right, that number right there is buried into it. Now we're going to do some switcheroo in here with this ELIN gateway feature. And what's going to go to Verizon in the from header is the 6284. Bingo. So this ELIN gateway basically does the old pulls to switcheroo, pulls from the ELIN field in the PitaFlow information, and then sends it and changes the from header that goes in the invite to Verizon. That's going to obviously then go to Intrado, who we contracted with to handle our 911 calls. The customer ordered this stuff right here, and they, they had these DIDs associated with address and designators so what eventually is going to route to the right selective router and the right PSAT is going to be 
based on this address and these things are going to pop up at the PSAP 1333 West Cherry Stone floor one and that telephone number right there okay now let's quickly go over the callback feature okay so let's say Lynn gets disconnected now there needs to be a callback we're going to call back obviously the 6284 number that's the number that showed up at the PSAP that's going to get to Verizon Verizon is going to forward that to the Microsoft DR router over its SIP trunk and then the ELIN gateway feature inside this SBC is going to do the old switcheroo again it's going to change 6284 to 6691 and then that is going to obviously get back to Lynn and that's how it works okay how do we make this work from an SBC standpoint the one thing that we need is the ELIN capability all right now you'll find that in the list of session border controllers certified for direct routing if you look on this page and you go down you're gonna see several columns there this s this 911 service provider capable that's the pit of flow stuff this elin capability that's the capability to turn pit of flow into elin and send it on down the line to a sip trunk that's connected to a provider that doesn't support pit of flow so be very careful when you're talking to a customer about uh, traditional ELIN, ERL ELIN capabilities from Microsoft Teams because the SBC that you use needs to be able to do that switcheroo I was talking about. So you can see here the SBC SWE from Ribbon does not support that, but the SBC SWE Lite does support it. You can also see that audio codes, just about all the audio codes SBCs do support that. How do we make this work in Microsoft Teams? Well, if you know anything about list services, you will be able to configure this with no problems. The one thing that's kind of odd, I will point out. Okay, let's go over to locations. Let's go over to emergency addresses and you can see here I have two addresses just like I did in the slide. All right, I have two emergency addresses. Okay, let's go take a look at those. Now, I want you to note that I do not have any places under there. All right, my places are these particular locations. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean that this particular location is a place in itself because I identified it as a place or a designator inside Verizon VoIP. So if I edit this location, you can see I do my regular stuff with Microsoft List Services. However, I'm going to put in this extra guy right here. Now, you can't change things once you've already put them in in your emergency location. Or emergency address but you can see I added an ELIN right there and if I go look at my other address as well you can see this address I have an ELIN also there's my ELIN okay that uh, nine five seven six traditionally if you've been paying attention to emergency dynamic emergency routing and things like that in Microsoft Teams you usually want to or most literature will kind of take you down this path where you have a emergency location and then you have places inside the emergency location like this one right here you can see I do not have an ELIN for this location however I have two places simply I'm just telling you you can't do lists places when you're doing this ELIN thing okay so kind of throw that at the door I couldn't figure out how to do it anyway 
once you once you put an elin on an address you can't put it in places so um, hopefully that's understandable let's just go back and let me show you again we have two emergency addresses and those emergency addresses then have subnets associated with them okay you see there there's a subnet there's a description and remember I said the emergency location the address here means nothing what's meaningful here I could put anything here really what's meaningful here is that elin right there that's what's meaningful okay now I won't go through emergency calling policies or anything like that hopefully you know all that stuff but okay so we have elins now okay what makes this work in an SBC so for you SBC guys this is going to be interesting. Let's log into our SPC. This is Nadio Codes VE. And the first thing I want to go to, I want to go check out my licenses. And what I'm looking for is I want to make sure I have this license right there, that ELIN license. That is the ELIN gateway feature. Okay? So you need that. You'll need it on other platforms also if they have the ELIN capability. Next, let's go over to our signaling in the media. And I want to look at my IP groups here. And uh, pay no attention to this Entrado group. Don't be fooled. I'm not connected to Entrado to do this. Remember, we're testing stuff that would go to a SIP provider that does not ingest Pitaflow. Let's go look at the advanced features here in my IP group. And if I look down here, this right here, okay, that's the thing I need enabled. All right, and if I go up and pick the right group, I will see that it is enabled. So the SBC PSAP mode needs to be enabled. All right, so those are the things that you need. Now, one more thing for callback, and that's in, um, I think we'll find it over here in SIP definitions, and uh, right here, priority emergency. This right here, that's the cache for caching the ELIN number in the original from header, right? Remember we do the switcheroo. And we have to cache that number because if PSAP does a callback, we need to do the switcheroo and make sure we ring the right phone internally, right? So that's it. That is it on the SBC audio codes side. Now let's make this test call using Lynn's phone and I want to show you the IP phone here. There it is right there and you can see its address right now is 172.16.1.30. Now this doesn't update very fast so I do want to show you if I go into that switch right here and I want to show you that here's the device. I just did this so here's the device. There's the IP address. Let's go to the phone. Let's make the 911 call. We're going to do some captures and some traces. I'm going to show you how that ELIN gateway or the SBC does the old switcheroo. Okay, I'm going to start up my trace here. Let me connect with my syslog viewer. Okay, we're connected up now. All right, there looks like some uh, option pings there, so we're good to go. I'm watching everything. Let me step over here and go ahead and uh, make that 911 call. Okay, here we go. There goes the 911 call. I get the address right there, 41. 1333 West Cherry Stone, Corpus Christi, Texas, 78412, and so on and so forth. So I'm okay there. Um, your number, it says that 91 number. All right, let's go back and take a look at what happened. All right, let me uh, stop this. Let's take a look at a ladder diagram here. Where is this SIP invite? There it is right there. Is that a 911 call? It is. So we can see. Um, over here, this is Microsoft. All right, this is my um, audio code providing a direct routing. 
And then here I've just got it going the the SIP and byte passing on to the ether because I don't want to send it to the VSAP. So let's take a look at the invite. Here's the invite right here. We can see that the from is the 6691. That is, if you remember, that is Lynn's number, 6691. That's her real number. All right, let's go take a look at what this is all rest stuff here. I think I said earlier it's SIP. It's not SIP, but this is all rest. But this is SIP over here going to the DR router. And then we should have 6691 from header and then also some PIDA flow information going over to the gateway. So let's take a look at that. Let's go down and there's our SDP. And you can see here we got some XML stuff. Okay, let's go take a look at the trace from Wireshark. And I did that already. Okay, let's just take a look at SIP. And there it is right there. So there's Microsoft Teams uh, to the SBC. Okay, and let's go down in here. And let's go ahead and expand all this stuff here. If we go down, we're going to find it's way down here. Here we go. Okay. Here's the XML right here. All right. Starts up here. And if we go down, we're going to see the location. Right. There's the uh, lat long. Right. And then we got the address right here. Remember that? Corpus Christi 1333 should be there somewhere. All right. And let's keep on going down. There's my ELIN. Right there, 6284. Remember, that was the ELIN. That's not Lynn's number. That's the ELIN, 6284. Okay, so we got the ELIN in the PitaFlow body. Okay, remember, we need to send it over, so we need to run it through this ELIN gateway. And what does that look like? Well, let's look on the other side. I have that over here in Monkey. If we go look... This is going to make more sense to you. If we go look, here's the invite to, I got this going off in the ether here, you know, just so we don't do too many uh, calls over to the uh, PSAP. But if you go look at this guy, look right there, 6284. So from Microsoft to the SBC, we have the regular originating from header. But going beyond that to the VoIP provider, that does not support PIDA flow, we're doing ELIN. So that is how you do traditional ELIN with a VoIP service like Verizon that doesn't support PSAP. So if you think about this for a second, you can migrate if someone already has an ELIN strategy or is worried about adhering to a, the uh, current regulations you can absolutely do it because remember you can provide movement with subnets around your company now be cautious because i'm talking about right now when we're talking i'm not talking about nomadic users or anything like that so anyway hopefully this has been helpful and um i've gotten some questions on you know i've, I've seen some things come over across the wire you know customer wants to do this now they're not worried about nomadic users that are coming in, in February 2022, we're worried about stuff right now. Can we meet regulations now? We'll worry about that later. All right. And this will definitely do it. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful.